Thank you so much for troubling me. That was fabulous. Uh, my, uh, my name is Adrian Randolph, Dean of Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, and, and congratulations, congratulations to the great class of 2017. 2017. You've been able to take your seats now. You're standing, you can relax. Uh, I'll be speaking for a few minutes, and then I'll introduce our guest speaker today. I want to say also congratulations to all those who have supported you in achieving the goal of being graduated from Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences and Northwestern University. Congratulations to all the families, friends, and supporters. Earning your degree, it certainly is your achievement, graduates, but it also takes a community. And it takes a community to support you through the years at Northwestern and what will come before you. So, so thank, thank you all to the people in the stands who are supporting you here today and all the people who are not able to join us. Before, Before yes, yes, why not? I'd also like to say thank you to the faculty and staff of Northwestern who through the years have helped you earn your degrees and a round of applause for them as well. And before proceeding, I would like to pay tribute to our forebears, including those who inhabited these lands before Northwestern was founded. In today's world, we sometimes feel so disconnected from the land and a sense of place. I simply wish to honor all those who came before, including our generous and engaged alumni, indeed all those who defined the path on which we walk today. An expression first recorded in the 12th century is apt. We stand on the shoulders of giants those who came before us and lift us up. We see further and with greater clarity because of their efforts, and in giving thanks to those around us now, we should not forget those who came before. This act of not forgetting is to me part of who I am. As an art historian, my life is literally lived among objects, texts, and ideas bequeathed to us by our predecessors. And today, I want to speak to you about several such bequests. As you can see, we honor you graduates and your achievements literally under the banner of your major, or one of your majors arrayed here around us. These beautiful ceremonial banners celebrate English, chemistry, anthropology, economics, African-American studies. I had to choose some. I'm sorry to leave any of you out. But, uh, but we, these degrees, these majors, excuse me, not degrees, these majors represent not just courses of study, study, but are symbolically the shoulders on which we stand. The disciplines and interdisciplines that constitute Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences are collectively platforms for greater understanding, the shoulders of our academic forebears, and we see with greater clarity and further owing to the work of so many individuals and groups who have offered up to us the methods to understand complex issues. But the curriculum you have completed is a course of interdisciplinary study. You may march behind one banner, but you surely recall, with pleasure or not, the experiences you felt in studying one of the other fields represented here by these ceremonial cloths. So above and beyond your majors and what they entailed, you have all had to fulfill a range of requirements, writing requirements, language requirements, distribution requirements. And I remind you of this, because as you cast off from the shores of Lake Michigan and Northwest and taking whatever direction you choose now to plot, it is my dearest hope that the vantage point from which you survey the future will be sustained by the deep and broad experiences you have had here both inside and outside the classroom. This is the nature of the degree you have earned, which prides itself on a fine calibration of breadth and depth, and is contained in our very name, another historical bequest to us, Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. Another time I could talk about the terrific Weinberg family and perhaps muse on the meaning of college, but today I want to say a few words about arts and sciences. What do these terms really mean? It's worth thinking about because sooner or later and probably already, someone has asked you graduates about your degree. We often simply answer such questions by referring to our major. But because of the interdisciplinary nature of our degree, this really actually begs the question. As graduates of the college know what students study here 
is far more complex than simply a major. It is tempting when one hears arts and sciences to think that sciences refer to the experimental and quantitative world of the natural sciences, and that the arts refer to creative and more qualitative analysis. But the terms do not refer literally to the arts and the sciences, but rather to the Latin terms artes et scientia. Etymology points to the deep histories of these words, and such histories can, in some ways, be seen to reverse the polarity of their modern meanings in unexpected ways. For in Latin, ars artes means practice or technique, and scientia, derived from skio, means knowledge. Art, therefore, contains within it the germ of what has come to be called in today's academy experiential learning, while science etymologically refers to knowledge and points more towards abstraction and memory. It follows that one reasonable modern understanding of arts and sciences might be practice and knowledge. And it is this that infuses all that has brought us here today, the hard-won rewards of knowledge forged not only through lonely reflection, but through practice and the experience of doing. Should someone ask you about your arts and sciences degree, you therefore have a clear answer. It refers to practice and knowledge. That is what you have done with your time in Northwestern, brought together carefully assembled information and its productive use in a vast range of disciplines and fields. So the question is now, you have this uh, some accumulated knowledge and you've tempered that knowledge through practice. Uh, what next? To what end does our degree, the arts and sciences, harness practice and knowledge? This is where we must turn from description to choices. One could do worse, I think, than turn to another Latin reference. Quaecumque sunt vera. When I came to Northwestern a couple of years ago, I remember trying to figure out about the institution, scanning the web for information about what was to become my new academic home. What is the origin of our purple fascination? Who is Willie the Wildcat? What, in fact, is a wildcat? Uh, and what is the rock? What is wa, mu, mu? What are these things? And what is Dillo Day? And why is it called that? And why? Are we are fascinated with armadillos? I, I don't understand these still, but I remember looking around the website and I came across this motto, Quecumque sunt vera. It makes sense that an institution founded by Methodist ministers in the mid-19th century would turn to the writings of St. Paul. The motto is a quotation from the Latin translation of the New Testament. It means, at least according to the King James Version of the text, whatsoever things are true. Now, I don't want to deliver a sermon. Uh, I'm not uh, prepared or qualified to do so, but I think it is instructive to contextualize this citation. So here's how the longer passage reads. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. I like that. Truth, honesty, justice, loveliness. The emphasis on these virtues is salutary and has us aim high. But what the text also says is intriguing. It lists all these virtues and then says, think on these things. Hmm. It does not entreat us to be truthful per se or honest, but rather encourage us to think about these virtues. And here is one thing perhaps we can derive from the Pauline text and our Latin motto. Yes, heed advice to be good and truthful, etc. These, this advice is often well-meaning, but perhaps as important as turning toward the virtues themselves is the injunction embedded in our motto to reflect on what these virtues are. And from the vantage point of 2017, the admonition about truth must be, now be seen in a particular social and media context, one in which the status of truth seems to be explicitly in question, and you all know what I'm talking about. Northwestern alumnus Stephen Colbert has coined the term truthiness. The imitable Kelly Ann Conway has forwarded a notion of alternative facts, and fake news is now the rallying call for so many of the, in the public sphere. While such concepts can be made humorous, 
or can be fashioned into weapons with which to bludgeon one's opponent rhetorically, there are substantive issues underpinning our public debates about meaning, the meaning of truth today, and debates to which higher education should attend. Now, you'll notice I'm a, a, a want-to-be classicist when I mention there's a Greek term, uh, alethe or aletheia, which means unveiling or disclosure. And I like this notion of truth as unveiling, because it reminds us of the need to take action, to reveal truth. Truth is not simply there. It requires our active participation. It entails seizing away the veil to put something freshly before our eyes. There are attempts to distract us with alternative facts or fake news from all quarters, it seems. As newly minted graduates of Northwestern and beneficiaries of an interdisciplinary degree that has trained you to look critically at issues from a range of perspectives. I urge you to be active truth seekers, recognizing truth as something for which we must all actively struggle. Do not be satisfied with the veil of appearances, but seek to pull the veil aside so you can witness your own truths. And I take this to be at the heart of our motto, which is a challenge to think on all things that may be true, and never to forget your active role in working through the truthiness towards something better. Now, why is truth and truth thinking about truth so important? On a personal level, I think it's not simply that the truth will lead towards some level field of clarity, although I think it's sometimes very gratifying to imagine that. Proof, evidence, precision, and persuasive forensic argumentation all have their particular way of contributing positively to our society. But what is also gratifying and deeply good is the way in which truth compels us to be humble before our own biases and suppositions. Social scientists speak about confirmation bias, the way in which information we receive is used not to produce clarity, but simply to buttress our own already held beliefs. This tendency is rampant in the world today, and a robust reflection on truth as something independent of our own opinions and beliefs is a bulwark against untrammeled subjectivism that seems so often to foment conflict. Put simply, truth helps us admit when we are wrong and change our opinions. Because one goal of the degree you are receiving is for you to develop your own distinctive voices, its interdisciplinary nature is also intended to help you develop a respect for the complexity of any issue. Broadly writ, the arts and sciences, practice and knowledge, are geared to help you develop that sense of what it is to experience the world from the point of view of another. To be humble before another person's truth. As former President Barack Obama put it recently, when discussing the role that books played in keeping him grounded during his eight years in the White House, quote, at a time when events move so quickly and so much information is transmitted, he said reading gave him the ability to occasionally slow down and get perspective, and, quote, the ability to get into somebody else's shoes. This act of getting into someone else's shoes, to have the imaginative and emotional uh, creativity and generosity to see the world in a different light is precisely what our educational model helps encourage. And this takes time. Hence the injunction to slow down and get perspective. So I'll leave you with a very short line of poetry I hope you take with you wherever you go as you venture out, leaving your alma mater, remembering these lines which are meaningful to me, penned by the American poet Wallace Stevens. Perhaps truth depends on a walk around the lake. Well, I don't encourage you to walk around Lake Michigan. Uh, that might not be a good idea. Uh, sometimes the sense of place the time it takes to pace oneself, literally walking, to think and reflect, is too a path to truth. And I say this knowing that you may be rushing out into the world beyond Northwestern, seeking all those things you feel prepared to uh, find. But do not forget what our educational model, the arts and sciences, practice and knowledge, and the thinking embedded in our motto, the reflection on virtues like truth, has bequeathed to us all a deep concern about the path to truth, and a willingness to understand that not all paths are alike. On that, I will end. 
Enjoy this celebration. Give thanks to your friends, classmates, family members, mentors, advisors, and teachers. Honor those two who have come before us, their struggles and their victories. We are honored at Weinberg College by your achievement, and we can't wait to see what you do in the coming years. Congratulations.